Hey guys, it's Hashim from Pushing Film. Today I'm going to review my favorite 35mm film camera, which is a Nikon FE. I would highly recommend this camera, whether it's for someone who's learning film photography or someone more advanced. The thing I love about it is how well designed it is. It does have an automatic aperture priority mode, or you can use it in complete manual. So it has everything you need and nothing you don't need. It's easy to find lenses for, and they're a great price as well. So the body is extremely well built, really tough, made from alloy, and the internals are mostly mechanical, but also electronic. So it does require a battery, but if the battery was ever to die, you can still use it in a 90th of a second. So it's extremely reliable as an everyday shooter, the same way I use mine. And even though a lot of people feared the electronic internals when this camera first came out in 1978, it's proven to be extremely reliable and it's mostly analog circuitry. So it still gives you really reliable shutter speeds, whether you're using it in automatic or manual. The other thing I love about this camera is just how well designed it is. It's extremely minimal. There's no loud badge on the front of it. It's small, inconspicuous, especially when you get the, the black one or the black lens like this. I just love using it and it, it's just served me so well. So you could pay more for the Nikon FE2, which was the later version, but I honestly think this is the better option. It's cheaper, easier to find, and it has everything you need once again. So the FE2 actually removes some features like the battery check meter. It actually has a different power switch model. So on the FE2, you need to wake it up every 16 seconds or something. With the FE, as long as this is out, your camera is ready to take a shot. Even if it's been sitting there, I can pull this up and the shutter's gonna go off. And the beauty of it is, if I have that clicked back in, I'm not gonna be taking any accidental shots because as long as that's back in there, the shutter is locked off. So one of the things I love about this camera is I'm not wasting frames taking accidental shots while the camera is coming in and out of my bag or when I'm going to pick it up. So that's even something that I've noticed that a lot of cameras don't have and it's a great thing about the FE. The other thing about the FE over the FE2 is that you can get more shots out of your film potentially because the FE2 locks out your first few shots to a higher shutter speed. With the FE, you can potentially get a couple of more shots, so maybe 39 shots out of a 36 exposure roll. That's another great thing I love about this. And you can find one of these for usually less than 100 bucks. In my opinion, for what it is, that's a great price. All the dials and selections are really well placed on this camera. I just love how it feels. Once you get used to it, everything just falls right into where your fingers naturally lie and it just becomes like an extension of your hands. So let's take a look at some of the features on this camera. Starting on the top of the FE, there's a standard ISO selection dial. So you just press down this little button and rotate to select your film speed. And I think it goes up to 3200. On top of that is the rewind knob with the standard retractable lever for rewinding your film. And there's also a two-stop exposure compensation. So you lift this ring on the outside as you rotate to set up to plus or minus two stops of exposure compensation. There's a standard hot shoe flash mount here. So I like to use this Nikon SB30 flash. Uh, one of the things about the FE and a con compared to the FE2 is it's not compatible with TTL or through the lens metering. So you can still use pretty much any standard flash but it just means that you have to manually set the flash power or use one of the, the auto or semi-auto modes. So that'll sync at 125th of a second and it's still you know, perfectly usable and having a, the option for a flash is better than no flash. And uh, moving on is the shutter speed selection dial. So you can manually set up to 1,000th of a second with the FE and also there's the auto. So to get out of auto, you just need to press this little button as you rotate the dial to get back out. Otherwise, it just stays locked in. Also, you'll see M90 on the dial here. So that's your mechanical 90th of a second, which is what you can use when your battery is dead. Also, there's a bulb mode useful with long exposures. You can use a thread cable release there. And then there is the shutter advance mechanism which you click out to turn the camera on. So the little red dot here means that you're good to go. 
and when you have that locked back in, your shutter is locked out. And let's move to the multiple exposure here. So you just move this across or you know, as you advance your film. I'm not going to do it now, but that'll allow you to do multiple exposures. On the front of the camera, there's the lens release button here. So press that down to remove the lens. Pretty standard bayonet mount. Lock that back in. Also, you have a depth of field preview lever here. So you just pull that back, which will stop your aperture down. So whatever aperture you have it set to, this is really handy. It'll give you a depth of field preview through the viewfinder, like pretty much any SLR. There's also an auto exposure lock here. So you press this in and that'll lock in the automatic exposure and you can recompose. And also the other direction is your self timer, both on that same lever. And on the back of the camera, we have a battery test light here. So this is really handy. Now this one's a bit sticky. It's supposed to spring back up, but this one doesn't. So that is a handy guide to your battery life. In the middle, there's a standard film memo holder and just the serial number on the top here, which is the only place you'll see the model name of the camera, FE. On the bottom of the camera, you have some attachment points here for a motor drive, if you choose to use one. Uh, I've never used one with mine, but it's there if you need it. And there's a standard tripod socket in the middle. There's also the battery compartment here which uh, houses two standard LR44 cell batteries, pretty easy to find. And also the rewind release button. So always remember to press that before you rewind your film up on this side. And that's pretty much all the features on the FE. So one of the things I love about the FE is the metering system. In my opinion, it's one of the best metering systems on any Nikon, even compared to some of the more expensive cameras that I've reviewed in the past. So if you're using it in auto, you will see the green needle selected on the A for auto and the other one moving to tell you what shutter speed the camera is going to use. So you always have a visual sense of what the automatic exposure is doing. If you're using it in manual, the green needle will move to the shutter speed you've selected and the other one will continue to move according to what the exposure system thinks you should use. So the great thing about it is it's really intuitive and it just falls into your peripheral vision. So you don't even really have to think about it in a sense of reading numbers. It just becomes part of what you're seeing through the viewfinder and it makes it really easy to expose. Look at it. Look how small it is. That's what I love about this camera. It's the size of a modern mirrorless camera but you get the capability of a full 35mm frame. Not many other cameras come up for that. One thing I love as well about this is the exposure lock. So I can have an auto and focus, lock the exposure and recompose. So all you do is press that little lever in, which is self timer on the other side, but I can focus on a darker area where I might be exposing for the shadows, lock it in, recompose so even if you do that the needle will still move but that's actually really handy because you can see how far off you are in terms of stops away from your original exposure that you locked in so i can lock into the shadows recompose and the needle might fly off about three stops and i might know that my film isn't going to handle that dynamic range so i can recompose so it's really great to use this camera and the metering system if you like to use the zone system So if you're looking for a camera to get into film photography with, the FE I think is a great option. There are other good options out there like the Canon A1, A1 and the Olympus OM series. But I honestly think that the FE has a slight edge in terms of value for money and the availability of Nikon lenses because it is compatible with a whole range of Nikon lenses. And the price on these is always right. So I bought mine while I was in Japan for about 40,000 yen for the body and I bought a 50mm lens when I was learning. But if you're buying online, usually you'll find a body with lens for let's say 200 US dollars maybe, depending on the lens you get with it. But in terms of value for money, I think it's a really good deal. All right, so let's take a break from all the talking and have a look at some of my favorite shots that I've made with this camera.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Nikon FE, my favorite 35mm film camera, and I hope that it inclines you to make the decision to get one if you've been thinking about it. I love this camera, and if it ever dies, I'll just buy another one and another one. So, Nick's currently in Taiwan, and he did a trip over there and to Japan. He's got a bit of a surprise that he's brought back from Japan. So we're gonna do an update video soon, just maybe when we hit 2,000 subscribers. We've got a lot of great content in store. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe and keep your eye out for our next video. All right, we'll see you on the next episode of Pushing Film. I like this camera lock, it's so good, yeah? <laughs> You've got the Nikon FE, it's fantastic. <laughs> You can select shutter speeds because it's a lot easier to find good lenses for it and the price is always right. <laughs> you bird. <laughs>